welcome back. Today I'm gonna be doing a mixture of cooking, baking, housework, cleaning, you name it. It's gonna be like a motivational type video. I have several crock pot meals and also I'm gonna be making a vegetable pizza. I think it might be more common among Amish and Mennonites. It's something I grew up with and it's super easy. So I'm just showing you a couple of really easy meals, dishes, that kind of thing. And then I'll try to have things linked down below or the recipes there for you in the description box. So be sure you go check that out. If you're new here, my name is Lynette Yoder. I am a Mennonite mom living in Sarasota, Florida with my family. Currently around 23 to 24 weeks pregnant with our first little girl. We have two boys, Caden and Jackson. We're really excited for a little girl to join our family. Okay, so I have just a little bit of time left, an hour or two before I have to go pick up my son from preschool. So I'm trying to get as much done as I can. If I sound out of breath, it's because I'm pregnant and I'm like running around. I got some groceries this morning, so I'm putting those away and stuff. And also I'm gonna be baking some cookies. Usually I bake my own cookies or bars. I just usually do that. This morning I saw these in Walmart and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna do it. It's a lot quicker. It's gonna make 24 cookies, easy, done. So I'm gonna do that and then probably start with dinner. So I'm not sure how the video is gonna go succession wise because I'm filming like the meal parts in different parts of the week. So yeah. It'll just be what it'll be, but I hope it gives you guys some motivation and I hope you guys subscribe if you're new and thank you for coming back. So first of all, I wanted to wash my youngest son's bed and this bedding is from Betty's Beds if you're not familiar with them. This is like a zippered all-in-one bedding comforter type of thing and we still really like it. I don't wash it every week, but they say you can. Uh, so it's just really easy for, especially for kids or you know bunk beds RVs whatever I will leave a link in the description box down below if you're interested I'm just putting away some of my groceries and prepping some produce and everything before I get started with some of my meal preparation. So if you're looking for more organization type videos, I have a playlist for that and I kind of showed you how my pantry looks. It's a little fuller right now than it was <laughs> I think when I was organizing it, but it's school time right now. So the next thing I did was make my cookies and I must say they were really good and Nick was raving about them and I had to inform him that they were not from scratch, but they are very good and <laughs> they're very easy to do. I would like always have cookies or bars on hand if I could help it, which I do a lot of the times, but that's kind of my weakness. I love cookies and things, especially to go with coffee or just a snack. I like chocolate and everything, but I'm not one of those who just like craves chocolate, like plain chocolate. I would rather have cookies and stuff instead of like candy and things like that. So the first recipe here is my pulled pork sandwiches that I made. And I have two of these smaller pork tenderloins. They came in one package, but I put those in the crock pot and then sliced up some onions. It doesn't matter how you want to slice them, but they kind of, you know, cook themselves. As far as seasoning it, I put in about two teaspoons of garlic salt, I believe. About one teaspoon of salt. Some chili powder, which was probably about a teaspoon as well. I am kind of known for just dumping, so I am sorry if some of my measurements aren't exact. I also added some parsley flakes just on top of that, and then I went ahead and put the onions and stuff in there as well as the barbecue sauce. Now you can make your own bar barbecue sauce if you want. I just wanted something really quick, so I put in Sweet Baby Ray's on top of that, and then my onions. Uh, but then I added some beef broth 
to it just to add a little liquid so that the sides don't burn. Also, I want to say I would have used crockpot liners if I would have had them on hand, but I was out and I had forgotten to buy some. So all of these crockpot meals are really handy if you have the liners to go in them. So I put it on low and then let it cook for, I forget how long, four to six hours probably on low. And then I just kind of shredded the pork and also I made a little bit more barbecue sauce. I put some brown sugar and Worcestershire sauce in regular barbecue sauce just to add a little bit more liquid to it and to give a little bit of a kick and some sweetness. And then I just put it on some hamburger buns and a little bit of cheese on top of that and they were pretty good. The boys actually approved of them and they are usually kind of picky so I think they liked them for the most part and I like them as well. It was super easy and delicious. So for the vegetable pizza, I'm using crescent rolls and I'm just gonna do like a half sheet size. So this would be like a small cake pan. Generally, like if we wanna take it somewhere, I would do two things of crescent rolls to like my big 11 by 17 or whatever that size is. Um, but I'm gonna do just a half size since it's just for our family. But I'll just roll these out into the pan and then bake it a little bit. You just kinda wanna press the seams together. It doesn't have to be fancy but now I'll put it in the oven for just a little bit till it's baked. I then prepped some of my veggies to put on the pizza. This is totally up to you what you want to put on, a, on it, but generally I would put broccoli, cauliflower, shredded carrots, some onion, and then some cheese. I think I mentioned it later on in the video too, but just in case you're wondering, this is what I'm doing. And here is the finished baked crust. I would say, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. The next thing is mixing sour cream and cream cheese together. I would say about a cup of sour cream and maybe six ounces of cream cheese. I don't know, I just kind of put it together. It's not a big science to it. And then I added at least most of a ranch pack to that. Uh, maybe not quite. And then I just stirred it together and put it on my pizza itself once it was cooled. Um, here I'm just prepping some peppers and stuff for another crock pot meal that I'm doing. Once the crust was cooled, I'm ready to assemble it. So I'm just putting the ranch stuff on top of it and just kind of spreading it out over it as you can see what I'm doing here. And then I'll go ahead and layer on my vegetables. I'll show you the pizza in a little bit, but I'm making some Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Um, this recipe comes from Pinterest. I think Lauren Grootman is the author of it, so I'll go ahead and link her recipe down below. Uh, I would recommend <laughs> that you guys actually buy real steak for it because I had just bought in like some stew meat. I thought it would work, um, and it was okay, but it was more of a roast beef texture to it, so I almost didn't show you guys, but I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to. It'll give you an idea. And Emily was telling me that, yeah, just do it. It'll give him an idea or whatever. So 
Um, but basically you just add onions and green peppers to some type of like maybe round steak or something. She tells you what kind you can use. And then I put some minced garlic in there just for some extra flavor. And also a pack of Italian salad dressing mix. Just, I don't know, I think she said it gives some extra kick to it. And yeah, it did have good flavor. So this is what you can add to it for flavoring. I think her recipe calls for beef bouillon and some water, but I didn't have the bouillon cubes. So I just added a little bit of beef broth to it and then put it on the in the crock pot on low for a couple hours. Okay, so I got Jackson from school. I am gonna do my floors. I didn't wash my floors in a while. It's embarrassing, but I need to wash my floors. So that means I need to kind of vacuum and stuff. It doesn't need a lot of vacuuming, but I'm gonna do what I can because I need to mop. It's bad. That's what I'm gonna do next. So if you're curious, my vacuum is a Shark vacuum. That's the brand of it. I had gotten it off of Facebook Marketplace, almost new for like $50. So it has definitely had its share of use already. I'm guessing it's close to two years now, but I really like sharks and I especially like the all-in-ones where you have features with the hose and everything so you can get into corners if you need to. I just really like the versatility of it. Um, so definitely if you're on the hunt for them, you can find them, oh, pretty much any big box stores or online or something. So definitely uh, check them out if you're looking for them. I love my O-Cedar mop and mop bucket. It's really handy, especially if you don't want to be you know, getting your hands wet or getting down on the floor, hands and knees type of thing. That would probably be the best way to do it, but mm -mm, not here. I'm not going to do that, <laughs> especially not with my stage of life. I just like mops and that kind of thing. So this one works really well. It's like a microfiber type of thing. So I think I have it linked down below if you're curious about it. Uh, so yeah, I just focused on some of the main areas downstairs. I didn't do it thoroughly, thoroughly as far as vacuuming everything because I had done it a little bit ago, but I did want to at least mop and it felt really good to get it done. So this video is going to be jumping around a lot, but in the next clips, I have a different shirt on because I showered. So, so this is what it looks like. I'm going to try it once and See what I think. I mean, you could really put on there whatever you want. Um, I think some people might not even put cream cheese in the sour cream. You could just do ranch dressing maybe, or like sour cream and the ranch. But I feel like the, the cream cheese adds a little bit. So it's a very easy recipe to do. So I'm gonna eat a little bit and then keep working on stuff. I have some laundry that I had started folding and I need to also probably vacuum upstairs if I can get to it and put Jackson's comforter back on the bed.
back to the Philly steak. There you can kind of see what I mean by it being more of a roast beef texture. But I love real Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Like, I just, I adore them. So, I was a little sad that I didn't get the right kind of meat. So, make sure you do that. But the flavor and everything was good. We did add some Miracle Whip to the buns then later before, like, when we started eating them because we thought it needed something. So, that would be optional, of course. Um, in some cases, you don't need anything. But I felt like it was a tad dry. But I hope it gives you guys a little bit of inspiration if you're looking for sandwiches. The next recipe is one that I think I've shared on my channel before, but it is so easy. And in case you missed it, I'm going to go ahead and show you. This is another soup recipe and another crockpot meal. So I just put some chicken tenderloins, like the boneless skinless, in the bottom, frozen. I put in about a can of diced tomatoes. This recipe is like one you could do whatever you want really, but I put in some black beans, some whole kernel corn. I don't think I used quite a whole can. My husband isn't as fond of corn, but I like it and stuff. So I also added around a pack of taco seasoning to it. And then also I decided to put in some tomato sauce just to add a little bit more liquid. And I think I actually could have used some more liquid once uh, everything was said and done but I just kind of throw things it's literally a dump and go type of thing so um, beef broth and I put in some minced garlic as well just for some extra flavor and let me see what was the next step I think that was it yep so I cooked it for probably I don't know three four hours you could do it on high or low depends how long you're wanting to do it and the flavor is really good so then you can just kind of shred the chicken once it's cooked and it's ready to eat and the way we like to eat it is it's sort of you could eat it plain if you'd want to kind of like chili chili we like to add things to it sometimes or sometimes not but I'll just add some sour cream to it some shredded cheese and I like to have those little tortilla strips to put in them but I didn't have any so I just put in some tortilla chips and that's it it is so good it's so yummy it's perfect for fall so yes make sure you let me know if you do make it or if you do something different to yours all right the next thing is some apple crisp i am gonna try and remember the exact ingredients i think i used around a cup of brown sugar about a cup and a half of flour around a cup of quick oats or just regular oats whatever you have on hand and then about one teaspoon of baking powder as well as some cinnamon. I think I put around a teaspoon in just for some extra flavor. You could add a little bit of salt if you wanted to, depending on if your butter is salted or not. Um, but then I have some butter. It's supposed to be cold. I have mine softened just a little bit. And then you're, you kind of just cut it in there. I have one of those pastry blender things and it took me a while, but I put in about a stick and a half of butter and you just have to kind of work its way in there. It can take a little bit of time, um, but this turned out pretty decently. I asked my husband what he thought and he thought it was good. Um, so that is all you need to do for the crumb part of it. And then I took the lazy way out and I just bought some apple pie filling because I don't have any made myself and it takes quite a bit longer to, you know, cut up the apples and everything yourself. But it's definitely a lot better if you make it yourself, so feel free to use whatever type of filling you want. It wouldn't even have to be apples, you could use it with something else too. But I also prefer the apples to be cut up smaller, um, but it was still good and it's just one of those things that's like a comfort dessert. <laughs> Uh, just nice and warm and then we like to eat it with uh, vanilla ice cream. So I just put this in the oven for, I don't know, maybe 25-30 minutes. I mean, basically you just want to make sure it's heated up nicely and you can kind of tell once the edges start bubbling a little bit and then that's pretty much it. This is going to conclude my video for today. I know it was kind of all over the place, but I do hope you enjoyed it. And let me know if you want me to keep doing these types of videos. I do have some other video playlists where I just have like food recipes or Amish Mennonite style recipes. So I'll have them linked 
for you guys and make sure to subscribe if you're new. I enjoy sharing things with you guys and I just want to say thank you for supporting our family and my channel by watching. It really, really means a lot to me. So until next time, guys, I will see you later.